Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. In this project, I want to trace the heritage of the stars that I'm now turning. Uh, it's important, I think, to sometimes respect the history and the, the lineage of a particular project. In the beginning, if I wanted a star, I would turn a sphere and drill in several finials around it to give the appearance of rays out. And uh, that works, however, it's, it's a lot of work and, well, not that much work comparatively, but still, I wanted another way. Then I saw Theo Hara Lampu, I believe it is, from Australia, who turned an eight-point star, uh, the, which is like this one. Uh, the difference between his and mine is that he turned his jig for it and I 3D printed my jig for it. Uh, still, to turn this star, while it looks good, you have to make a specific size jig for it. So, that was well and good for that point in time, but then in the ornament challenge last year I saw something that looked a lot like this and I said, hey, I gotta do something like that because it kind of looked like a star. I added a finial to all the sides because this was turned on a pen mandrel. Found out later that the original person did not use a pen mandrel. He used yet another way, but which is always a possibility too. But in any case, I like this one. Then I decided that, well, I can do a little bit more and make it a little bit more pointy. Plus this one was quite big. So for that, I turned this one, which is the same process as this one. It uses a mandrel and holes drilled clear through. However, I went much deeper in the cove on each of the axes as, as it went through, three axes, to, uh, to turn this. And then I had another stray thought. Can I take a cube just like this one? In fact, these started off as being cut as cubes the same way, but instead of drilling holes for the for a uh, pen mandrel, why not turn it on the point? So you turn this way to get one, put it on another set of points, turn it and get one, another set of points, turn, and there's actually then four axes on this one as opposed to three on these. But how do you hold a project by the points. Well, when you turn a three corner or a cube into a box, there's a process, but generally you wind up destroying the points. So in this case, I actually 3D printed a couple of uh, jig fixtures that have, in effect, a corner pressed into the each end. Now, I 3D printed mine. If I were did not have a 3D printer, I would make some sort of chuck facing for my mount and then maybe with an epoxy or some of the med put a corner of a cube in and let it harden. The cube of course covered with a plastic film that would make it remove and then I'd have my chucks. But to save those who have access to a 3D printer some time I will put this on the share site and reference it in the video. So this project I'm going to turn this sphere which is again starting with a nearly two inch cube, but instead of turning it on the flats, I'm going to turn it on the corners. Now, can we, the question then becomes, what can we do more? Can we put finials on the faces? What else can we do with this star to dress it up even more? And I await your response on that. But meanwhile, let's get turning. This cube of maple is just under two inches each side. It is mounted between two special centers that are mounted to the spindle and to the threaded live center. The only thing special about these centers is that they will receive the corner of the cube. With two corners captured in the centers, there are six more now rotating with the lathe. In effect, they are split into two groups of three. Each trio are in effect in the same plane, at least on this axis. Their ghost image gives me guidance for my cut. With my spindle gouge, I'm aiming to cut a cove between the two sets of ghost images. Easy does it. This is almost entirely interrupted cutting. Only when the cut is almost at full depth is there a continuous cut.
Now just a bit of sanding with cloth-backed sandpaper held by the ends. I cannot risk holding the sandpaper against the wood with the points flying around as they are. Fortunately, with these mounts, it is easy to change the turning axis. Now I can go at the second cove. Easy does it, with very light cuts. When I try to cut too deep, this wood seems to jump and I have to back off. I try for very sheer cuts to minimize the contact between the tool and the wood. A bit more sanding, while I can, it would be nearly impossible later. Another axis change. There were eight corners to the cube. Divided by two, that means that there will be four axis shifts, one for each pair of opposing corners. One thing I quickly learn is that I cannot cut too closely to the corner. That would greatly reduce the traction for the mount. Fortunately, I learned that before I cut too closely. More sanding. Last axis change. Keep the cuts light and sheer. It is prone to chipping. Sheer cuts minimize this risk. I have to stop to make sure I do not cut more deeply than the previous cuts. Will it survive? That question keeps running through my mind. More sanding, then just a bit of fine sanding with the lathe off to ease any sharp corners. I decided to spray this one black. There you have it, yet another star possibility. My options have been expanded. I hope your options are expanded also. The question is, where can we take turning from here? Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my website as well as on YouTube. Please spread the word by telling your friends about my weekly videos. I also appreciate your comments and questions. Please wear your full face shield whenever the lathe is running. Yes, I am nagging. Are you wearing yours at the lathe?